So undisposable is another example of interface and destructor that really works better than the class destructor. What is this? Let's really go to the coding and let's see that we are in Visual Studio. So let's see some coding. I am assuming that you have seen in many places that using keyword or if you haven't seen it, you're going to learn it. So what the using keyword does is you create an object like say that person, new person, and you want that person to be destroyed after this execution. So using means destroy the person object uh, or keep the person object inside this block of code. Keep the person object lifecycle inside this block of code. This is the using, using means. So you can use this keyword if you have an implementation of ID disposable in your class. That's it. That's when the ID disposable is needed, really. So if you really go to this interfaces, you will see that there is a class, destructor class, with ID disposable. So when you really implement the I disposable method, uh, sorry, I disposable interface, you really have to implement a method called dispose. So a dispose method does is it uh, calls as soon as the using uh, uh, block is done. So let's see some example. Oh, certainly do something here. Right line the world. That's it. So let's run our project. We'll see that class is created. It's from that destructor. We have class is created console right line. And then we are printing the capacity like the previous. And then the dispose method is called. And then the hello world is called. So if you really go to the method, class is created, capacity is printed, and then uh, as you can see that the destructor was never called. The destructor will call if we set this to null and uh, if we call the garbage collector in. So as you can see that it's a very advanced and very uh, quick way to dispose your classes. So let's go to the slides again. So far, we have seen adding a new method to break our existing code. So we have to um, make another interface to make it more modular. So that's really very important point. Now we are at the fifth step of object-oriented programming, which is polymorphism. And there are really uh, various definitions of polymorphism and many websites defines it differently I simplified it this way polymorphism means same thing in different kinds so to simplify that let's say you have a toy let's say you have a toy and it's just a toy and it's the same toy you can buy in red green and blue color that's it the three different flavor that's polymorphism that's the real life example so let's see that how to implement polymorphism in your code. So when people ask an in interview question that what is polymorphism, you can say that same thing in different kind and then say the programmatic way or the programmatic definition that how you can uh, implement the polymorphism in your code. The way is inherit your class from a base class. That's the first step. Second step is override a method from a base class. So you have to override. We haven't seen override yet, but we're going to see it right now. So override a method from your base class. In uh, C++ or C Sharp, you have to mark the method as virtual. But in Java, you don't have to do this. So keep in mind access modifiers because these are going to be problematic if you don't remember. And 
this is how you implement the polymorphism. So keep in mind the access modifiers. We're not going to go over those again. Keep you in mind that access modifier is a big factor in this polymorphism. Let's see an example. Let's say you have an animal class and animal have some properties that we don't want to see. Let's say they have some common properties and they have a method called talk. So when we call the method, let's assume that the print method actually console.write line and it's actually printing that generic Nemo talking. That's it. So uh, as you have seen in the earlier examples, inheritance that you can in inherit from person to student and person to teacher and we're going to do the same thing here so what we're going to do is we are going to inherit the animal class uh, sorry we're going to inherit the dog class from animal but we really want to change the dog behavior because dog really uh, talks differently uh, they bark and it will be really illogical to have the generic animal talk. We can have that, but let's really assume that we have a different class, the different uh, class which really represents a different object. So from the animal, we are defining the dog. So to implement the dog, we really need a something different in the talk method. To make that talk method different, we really need to override that talk method so we're really saying uh, inherits but here you really have to put the colon in the C sharp and override and dog just say oof that's it return so so how we're going to print it print dog dot talk and we will see in the console that it says that oof that's it so let's say we have another class called cat and we really want its behavior to say meal so we're really overriding the uh, talk method in the cat class and it's very simple and straightforward I don't think it would be a problem to understand and when you call the cat.talk it will say meal so let's say you have human so human says hello and they talk they say hello that's it so it's pretty straightforward. Let's say I want to implement, uh, I really didn't implement the get method. Get, I really didn't override the get, get's talk method. So what will going to happen is it's a void method. So, and already have a print. So we don't have to put it in the print. We just say cat.talk. So when we uh, call that method, it will uh, print out the generic animal talk. That's it. So let's see some of those encoding. I'm in Visual Studio and I have examples for polymorphism. Let's include this. So for this polymorphism, I have introduced the new person class with person poly. It's not really different, but um, it has virtual keyword in front of the what method so if you see the regular person class it doesn't have any virtual keyword in front of it but uh, here you have a virtual keyword before the what method so in C sharp if you want to override a method you really need the virtual keyword in front of it so if the developer doesn't put a virtual keyword in it so if they don't you cannot override it so if they do, that means they're allowing you to override their method. So if they don't have that override, you could still uh, modify it by the extension method. Remember the extension method I showed you? It was specially designed to solve this kind of problem. So uh, now if I really want to implement this walk method, if I go to my polymorphism one example and see that uh, polymorphism one it, uh, inherits from person poly and it's just a simple constructor and 
here I'm overriding the method walk and in the walk it will say that the first name the base dot first name as we've seen that base and this means so base dot first name is walking from polymorphism one class so I think I have an example of it let's see okay where is an example of polymorphism I just created the first uh, polymorphism one class poly and then uh, ask it to work and if you really go to the default walk method it said that uh, the first name is walking that's it but if it's really overridden then the method should look like this that the first name is walking from polymorphism one class so if you really successful with overriding the method the work method will display that it is from polymorphism one class and then we're changing it and then again say poly one uh, sorry poly dot work and then we are having the polymorphism three class let's go to that two let's see that what we did in two so in two what we're doing is calling the base method so the base method is actually the method here is walking so if you call this walk it will print uh, it will first print this that the allies if the first name is allies allies is walking and second it will print that allies is walking from polymorphism to class that's it and if you go to the polymorphism 3 example you'll see that it only says that print from polymorphism 3 class but different thing about this class is overriding so overriding is a type of polymorphism it's really called static polymorphism or sometimes called ad hoc polymorphism but if you're asked in the interview question that what is polymorphism and if you really say that or right they will judge you that you are wrong but uh, in spite of that fact Wikipedia really defines it as a polymorphism so you can reference it if they don't know it because I have seen many people don't know it so you can say that overriding uh, overloading sorry if I misspelled that overloading is a type of polymorphism said to be static or ad hoc polymorphism so what is really overloading overloading can be achieved by uh, same type of name in the method but with different parameters and parameters different means the parameters could be the type different or the uh, number of parameters are different based on two, two concepts so if you have a return type different it doesn't matter the compiler will give you an error so if you have two methods like same and uh, if I really try to compile it I will have an error I will have an error but if I have a different uh, parameter or additional Oh, so it is complaining that we have same number of parameters. It was just fine, sir. Mistake. So let's say we have another thing and let's just compile it and it's just fine. So this is how you can overload a method. And another thing that you can do is just change the data type. It will give you an error. So just comment out and then build and it's just fine this is called overloading these two way you can overload a method and overload is said to be static polymorphism or ad hoc polymorphism it doesn't have to be implemented after overriding uh, sorry after inheritance it can be done anywhere in the class if you have same name method you could uh, you're mostly uh, overloading those and uh, the great example of overloading is in the console.writeLine method. So if you just go to console.writeLine, you will see that there are 19 overloads. The overloads are shown like this. So if you go that 
it takes a parameter with boolean, it takes a parameter with character, something like that. So these type of functionality are given to mm, uh, make the programming much more uh, flexible. So as you can see that in the tree I have lots of those um, parameters, uh, lots of those uh, overloading methods based on what first name last name so that I could change. I could change the uh, first name and I could also let's just delete this. We change the first name I could at the same time change the first and last name and change these properties, change page properties, page properties when you change the parent class properties, something like that. So let's really print out our console program. See that Elias is walking, Elias is walking from polymorphism one class uh, by this method and we change the Elias name to hello and then hello is walking and then uh, walking from polymorphism one class yeah hello is working from polymorphism one class so far that's correct so after that we are uh, creating the polymorphism three class where we are calling um, calling the base class of uh, sorry we, we are just calling the Let's see, let's just go over quick. Just go to this. If you if you, you, you can go to any method by uh, uh, stepping into the method and press F12. That's it. You will go to the definition of the method. So here uh, you can see that we I have uh, comment out the base.walk. So if we have base.walk, what will happen is we will have Elias is walking again and then uh, Elias is walking from polymorphism 3 class and then then we have also changed it to hello and then call the walk it will do the same thing and then we change the properties these first these last base first base last and then console print out the first name the first name will be the this name that changed you see that this first so uh, poly first name would be this first as you can see that this means the upper class that you are seeing and rest of the uh, rest of are very easy if you have any question because it's very complicated if you don't spend some time uh, so I suggest you to download the code and spend some time in it and try to understand it's very simple but if you really watch the video it will be complicated because uh, some of the things I feel complicated right now because I have to go through the code and uh, really understand that what it's doing so really download the code and go through that code it's really easy but you have to spend some little more time in it that's it